Hello everyone, how are you today? I am sitting in the very quiet Cole cafeteria uh, um, waiting for um, an anticipation of everyone's return to school on Tuesday. So we will return to school on Tuesday from our uh, two week remote learning and we will uh, be welcoming students back in. Done a really nice job of um, during this remote learning time. I know it's been very challenging uh, that this is not ideal, but you guys are doing a super job. Um, the first word of our three words of the story is eggs. Every week, uh, I receive eggs from the Tilly Farms, Jen Tilly, Archer and Aurora Tilly's family. I purchase them, uh, try to buy them by the month, uh, and then every every week they dropped off. And uh, I go home and, and then my wife and I have eggs every morning for breakfast. It's a high protein meal, it's good, it works for us. But, you know, the thing about the eggs is I know that they're there. I know that they're there. I can count on them. I know every day that when I get up, I have the eggs and they're, they're in there and they're ready to go. But if I open that uh, egg carton uh, some morning and the eggs were all crushed, I would have to adapt. And that's kind of what we've had to do uh, this whole school year. We've got to adapt. We've got to adapt to uh, different circumstances, different situations. And for you as parents, you can you used to or have been able to rely on the school, uh, kind of like I rely on the Tilly eggs. They're there every day. I know I can count on them. I know it's going to be the same thing every day. But unfortunately, what we've seen over the last month is that school has been a little bit unsettling in terms of uh, we've had students that have had a quarantine. We've had students who've had to stay home. We've had some staff have to stay home. And so it makes it really hard. And so I, I understand that and I realize that. We have been so fortunate in this school community compared to other school communities with our positivity rate and with the number of students we've had to be out in absence. But it is, it's like eggs. I can count on Tilly eggs. I know every morning I'm gonna have them. I know they're there. And for you all, it's really hard right now. And that's why we took a pause when we came back from winter break was, we needed you guys to have some eggs. We needed you to know that you had something you could rely on and you knew that remote learning was gonna happen. And I will tell you, I have been on lots of Google Meets and I tell you, I am very proud of the staff. They have done a super job and they have worked very hard. I, I have joined several Meets. I'm pleased with the engagement. It is not the same, but it's something. And so just know that when we come back to school uh, Tuesday, that there are going to be situations that arise that uh, are kind of like opening your egg cart in the morning and finding the eggs cracked. Uh, we may have to call you and say, we had a child who was COVID positive and we had to quarantine for, the, for a period of time uh, for that. And, and we talked about that already, contact tracing. Uh, we have um, a, a wonderful, a couple of PVC pipe poles that we go around and we, and we measure and we say, okay, who's been within six feet for 15 minutes or more? And to the teacher's credits, uh, they have worked really hard to, to change some desks and such around so that we have limited exposure to, uh, to that as we can. But we have to contact trace at lunch, we have to contact trace at specials, we have to contact trace on the school bus. So I understand your uh, hesitancy and your frustration sometimes when we have to call, but just know that we're doing the best we can, but also know that I understand you need the reliability that I have every day with my um, Jen Tilly eggs. I know they're gonna be there, I can rely on them. And we're trying really hard to make that happen in our schools. And so we're hopeful when we come back, we can get back into flow and we're gonna be able to do some things that make things uh, more consistent and more like what we're used to. But again, some of this is out of our control. And so sometimes the egg cracks and just know that. Second word is backpacks. We are so fortunate in this school community to have uh, giving individuals, and we have a backpack program. We have uh, 12 backpacks that, that go home every week, and those backpacks are filled with food from Food Finders. And we typically have those backpacks that go home uh, with students, but we have had a really kind offering from Richard Laughlin and his family. Now the backpack uh, food supplies are delivered uh, about once a month, and they're delivered to the Laramie Township uh, branch of the Clarksdale Laramie Township Fire Department. And there the Laughlin family does something for our community, which is amazing. They unpack all that food, they put it in containers by individuals, and then those are sent home. 
we have decided with, and, and thankfully for the Laughlin's this is occurring, that instead of sending these heavy backpacks home with children, we're going to have those delivered to school, to the to school, to uh, individual homes, to your front porches if you receive those. We do this for a couple of reasons. Number one, and if Leslie Summerfield's listening on the school bus, or Petty Finfrock, or uh, Tammy Schaefer, or any of the bus drivers, they'll say those backpacks are heavy, they're cumbersome, they're hard. Um, also, though, there's a stigma attached to that. You know, you have to take this backpack home when it says, hey, I'm getting help for food. We want to eliminate as much of those things as we can. I understand that from my own personal life as a child. Sometimes circumstances uh, made me feel like I was different, and we don't want that for children. So uh, thank you to Laughlin family. Thank you, thank you, thank you uh, for making that happen, and as well as Food Finders and everyone who has donated. We did have some fantastic news yesterday. Uh, we had a phone call and Miss Lewandowski, the counselor at Cole, who has been a super dyna dynamo in addition to our school, um, and also uh, Jason Learman, who is a fabulous counselor at Wainwright Middle School, joined a meet with me and two individuals from Food Finders. The John and Ruby Parks Trust and the Laramie Township uh, trustee have provided for a donation to Food Finders that we're thinking is going to allow for a uh, once a month mobile food pantry to Clarks Hill. And that will probably be during the day. That's just the best we can do. That's kind of what the Food Finders does. We're trying to work with the Clarks Hill um, uh, Christian Church and Pastor Stedge. But the way this works is you pull up and you can get food from a, uh, from a mobile food pantry. And we're hopeful that that will help in these very difficult and trying times. Um, we were only able to choose one location. We feel like if we have families in Stockwell or in the surrounding counties that cannot get there, you are gonna let Mr. Learman or Mrs. Ms. Lewandowski or me or Mr. Lowry know, and we will make sure we get those things for you. We can pick those up. The donation also has provided for some uh, emergency uh, lunch boxes, which will have food that will get you through for like a week. So we're trying really hard, so I, that's exciting. So first word is egg, second word is backpacks. Third word is cookbook. Rachel Vaughn is like a dog with a bone right now with cookbook. She, uh, the Cole PTO is doing, I think, a really smart fundraiser. Uh, we don't need cookies right now. Uh, we don't need cookie dough. We don't need um, all sorts of things that we, we don't need. But you know what we have? We have a ton of time on our hands right now. And I, I don't know about you, but I know I'm eating more at home. I'm eating healthier. I'm also um, spending more time with my wife, uh, which is fantastic. And it's been almost, it's been over 20 years, like 1999 since our last cookbook. So we're putting together a, a, a coal PTO cookbook. Now, if you are a PT, if you are a coal parent, you have received an email from me already this week with the very easy links to follow to put these recipes on. And it doesn't take very much. So, um, I encourage you two to five per family. We're trying to have 500 recipes input into the Cole PTO cookbook uh, by February 8th. Then we want to get it together. We will start selling these on February 5th. They will be uh, $14 each, which is really pretty good. And I will tell you, I've seen some of the recipes they are amazing. I think this is a really smart fundraiser. It's a great gift. You can buy them now for birthdays, for um, Christmas, down the road of life. But I do think we have wonderful people in this school community who uh, have great recipes, and I think this is a good time to do it uh, as well. So we will give you more information about when we start selling these. But for right now, we need your recipes. So check your email because one was sent out. I may try to email you again. Um, I'll probably email several times because we need we need this to happen. And I will tell you, it doesn't take very long. I sat down one morning with my computer at home with our little family cookbook. I put seven in. And I did some. I did a wide range of things. It doesn't, doesn't take very long. Uh, so just know that. And also personalize it. You know, if there's, for example, the name of the recipe and then maybe, you know, this is, this is uh, you know, so-and-so's favorite, your child's favorite, or in honor of a family member who made that, put it in there. We love those pieces. That makes it special. Um, our, our story is olives. Uh, 
this is one of those things that uh, sometimes Mr. Pinto, uh, uh, I don't know, overdoes it, but also I'm going to be very transparent with you on this. And um, I like a good olive. I like a black olive. I like a green olive. But I, uh, one time, I think it was around right before Thanksgiving. It's been several years ago. Um, we bought some olives in the store, and I started eating them. The, now, the thing about an olive is it's kind of like Vicki Morris and, and Leslie, Leslie Waldridge's cheese ball. When I start eating them, I can't stop. So I opened an olive jar, and, you know, throughout the uh, afternoon, would stop in, uh, get a few more. And all of a sudden, I ate the whole thing. I ate the whole jar. Now, it wasn't a big jar. It wasn't like a giant queen-sized jar, but I do like an olive. My wife went to get an olive, and she said, Mike, where are the olives? And I'm like, um, ate them all. Um, and I, like I said, that's kind of the joke around the house is don't walk too close to Mike's mouth. You might fall in. But um, I, I tell a story about olives because it, it does discuss the word moderation. We are in a situation right now where we are tired, 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 tired of doing this but we have to moderate what we do. We have to continue at home to be present, to remain focused, and to do all those things. I will tell you, the teachers and staff at the school are doing a great job. We are not spreading this situation, this virus at school because we're wearing our masks, we're social distancing, and we're practicing hand hygiene. What's happening is, is going through families. It's going through people who get together in small groups and some in large groups. And so think about the olives. Think moderation because, you know, we do like uh, to do our things. But but take, take it from me, Mr. Pinto, don't eat the whole jar of olives. We're not there yet. Hopefully soon we'll have, I know some of the parents have already been vaccinated who are healthcare workers. I cannot wait for that situation to occur for for me and for my wife and for the staff of, of educators and for everyone as well. But again, think about me and green olives, moderation. I do like a green olive. If you're ever looking for a gift for me, I love green olives. All right, I have this card here, pass it forward. On the back of the card, it has a note and it says that this was, in essence, this a deed was done for you uh, by a child at Cole Elementary. I challenge you as parents in the next three days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, well, four days, Monday. Monday is Martin Luther King Day. It is also the National Day of Service. Have your child do something kind for someone else. They don't even have to know they did it. Just do it. It could be if it snows, shovel the driveway. It could be that you take the paper in. It could be that you brought the trash can in for a neighbor. Um, here's an easy one. Easy, easy. Bring in a couple shopping carts when you go to the grocery store. Do something for someone else. Make this intentional. Make this something that you say to your, ch to your child. Mr. Pinto has said, we need to pass it forward. All right? Because, because our, our um, uh, Martin Luther King Day is on uh, Monday, and that is part of our work at Cole Elementary with our life skills. Do the right thing. Treat people right. Be generous, kind, caring. Uh, is that we pass it forward. So I challenge you to do that. Uh, stay safe. Charge your Chromebooks Monday so that Tuesday your child can bring them back. Bring your cords, bring your cases, bring your Chromebooks and your iPads charged because we are, we are coming to school. And remember, just like I told you with the eggs, I know you rely on us at school and we're doing the best we can. We want to be like the Tilly eggs. We want to be reliable and, and be able to do that. But I need your help to continue to do those things. And when something comes up, I'm going to call you on the phone and just know it's not because uh, of anything that anyone's done wrong. It's just that circumstances are what they are. We are in the highest, hardest climb of this pandemic right now, January, February, and March. We can do this. But we're going to need to do it together. And that's been our motto all along. We can do this together. Think about this. We are approaching March. A year ago, I remember Breakfast with a Buddy happened on a Tuesday and a, or excuse me, a Wednesday and a Thursday. On Friday, we went home and we never came back. So we're, we're almost a year. And I know we're tired, but we can do this together. 
Uh, remember that. Remember that. Remember olives. Everything in moderation because we can, we can do this if we stick together. Thank you very much. Kids, super job on your um, remote learning. Thanks for getting your work. Get your work done. Come ready to go. We've got NWA testing. We still take an iRead test. We're still taking an iLearn test. We've still got school when we come back. Parents, thank you. Thank you for all of you who've been supportive, who understand. I will tell you, I've been so impressed with, with the teachers, but let me tell you, when your child gets on in the morning and they, they watch a recording of the teacher who's done something, uh, that has taken time beforehand. It doesn't just happen. They gotta record it, they gotta upload it, they gotta do those things. Then they have to try to keep up on things. And they're not hounding you because they don't want to, because they like to. They're hounding you because we want you to have your child to have the best education she or he can. And that's our mission. Staff member, super job. Community, thank you again for all your support. Um, again, this is Mike Pinto. I'm the proud principal of James Cole Elementary School. Have a fantastic day. Have a fantastic three-day weekend. Pass it forward.